Hi, good morning. This is Vaughan in Nova Scotia. It's the last day of winter. <laughs> it's terrible out there. <laughs> oh, there's Pooh Bell. <laughs> um, I'll take you and have a quick look before I start. I'm going to do a quick video just because I thought something I was doing now was pr pretty much everybody's problem. <laughs> this is the last day of winter. <laughs> it's windy and it's really cold and it's been snowing about four to six inches <laughs> okay, this is the age-old problem every time we pack a kiln um i'm wiping down some pieces uh and i fire on stilts as you know if you've seen my other videos i fire on these but then sometimes i wipe the glaze off the bottom um and uh, so i you know, something thought, you know, I have this question myself. How much do I wipe off to make sure the glaze doesn't run on the kiln shelf? Well, it depends on your glazes, and you have to test, basically, to see how much your glazes are stable and if they run. Uh, and some of my glazes run, like variegated blue, will run, and so I have to be very careful. Another factor is, if you single glaze on the outside of a piece, it's not likely to run that much if it's a fairly stable glaze. If you mix two glazes together, they interact, and also the thickness gets more. So basically, you will have more chance of running. And my experience tells me if I have three glazes on the outside of something, it's going to run. Uh, so you just have to be aware of it. So I was just wiping this one down, um, and this is my turquoise glaze. And I've wiped almost nothing, as you can see. It's literally a sixteenth of an inch from the bottom because this glaze is fairly stable and it's a single glaze. Well, there's the tong marks, which I always rub out as well. So when you glaze with tongs, just make sure you rub those out because they will show up after the firing. Um, and this has got three glazes on the inside, but on the outside, nothing, just the turquoise. So I know that'll be pretty stable. Variegated blue, which is this glaze, is single glaze on the outside, but it still has a good chance of running down um, because basically it, that's just what it does. You know? um, so I wipe the bottom just with a sponge and I like to see that little ring around the inside of the foot a little bit. I just feel like it highlights where you sign or stamp your pieces. Um, as you know, I always sign my pieces because I'm a two-dimensional artist as well. So I've always sign the pieces. I think that's um, also just for people finding you. There you go, so I've got that off. And you can see if it's going to show up or not. There's just about an eighth of an inch wiped on this one. Because it's single glazed, I think that will probably be enough. You, you want to make sure you do too much because it's pretty sad when you unpack the kiln and you actually find your pieces stuck to the kiln shelf. These new kiln shelves, the advanced shelves, are pretty good, but still, you, if it runs down, you're going to have to grind off a little excess clay. Um, sorry, glaze. <laughs> but uh, there you go. All right, so that one there, you can see it's about an eighth of an inch white. And everything in between there. I mean, you just have to test your glazes. If you're going to put three glazes on the outside, I don't recommend it. Uh, but it can be done with some glazes, but it will run a lot more. Then I would fire on stilts, uh, and at least it won't stick to the kiln shelf, but it might stick to the, sh the, sh the stilt as well. Um, but anyway, another thing people have asked me is basically, how I sign my work. This is black underglaze. And a lot of potters like to just stamp their work. And that's that's a stamp type thing. And you know, it's traditional to do stamps, but because I was trained as a fine artist and I've always signed all my two-dimensional work, I sign all the pots. And all I'm doing, if I can tilt this down a bit, paintbrush. And very carefully, this is a Japanese paintbrush, so it actually can get a fairly fine line.
but still, you have to get used to writing with a paintbrush. Uh, so that's the video. It's just I'm just going through, you know, wiping all these pieces, um, and you know, how much do you wipe off? That's what it's called. As a quick follow-up, um, this uh, running thing with glazes, as I said, you have to test your glazes uh, because uh, there are lots of variables, especially when my studio I have 25 glazes. It's almost impossible to remember all the combinations. Uh, but I do know that my uh, bronze glaze, which is a, um, it's a copper, I think it has copper and cobalt, a whole bunch of different things in, but manganese dioxide a lot of. So it's pure metal almost. Uh, and this glaze acts like a flux when it's mixed with other glazes. Uh, and it makes the pieces run a lot more. So let me just show you this. Uh, I just unpacked this kiln uh, and uh, I have the, it was a firing like Randy's Red. Uh, so I got the, the red to come out really kind of red, but I reduced the soak down to 45 minutes. So I kind of feel like it's not a, it's, it's still really red, <laughs> but it's not as good as it could be. This one, if I show you, I added my bronze glaze, I call it, uh, and it is very shiny, metallic. It's beautiful. I use it for things like sinks and decorative pieces. I don't put this on functional work. Uh, this is an urn, obviously. Uh, I fasten these to my uh, ramp outside and decorate the outside of the building. But you can see it turned out really beautiful, but look at the runs. I left at least one and a half centimeters at the bottom of this piece um, so that um, I knew this place might make it run. Uh, and look how it ran, almost to the point of sticking it to the kiln shelf, but it didn't. There's the holes that I fasten these pieces down onto the ramp outside. I screw them to the, the ramp. But anyway, uh, you can see how it ran all the way from the top where the glaze was overlapping a little bit, all the way down. So that's how much, you, you know, it's important to test your uh, glazes so that um, they don't actually run. Um, so everything, is about testing um, and you really need to this was a perfect firing i mean basically i can get that one to come off but i'll take it off afterwards i mean the, all the other glazes this is recycled clay uh, and it worked really good um, basically i'm doing 2205 with it so the firing was perfect for all the other glazes let's see what was underneath here Oh, it's just the lids. Uh, let me take them out. They're a little hot. Um, so you've got the, the bronze underneath there. It didn't run because I wiped it off, basically. So that's the inside going in the urn. Um, there you go. I love old Roman amphoras and such. Um, British Museum, the Metropolitan Museum in New York, I visited all and I love that, those Egyptian and Roman so that's why I'm, I make pieces like this. I don't use them, nobody does and um, they rarely sell but I, as I said I decorate the outside of my uh, studio with them um, and here you go, these are the lids for the other pieces I got two two more of these, and they'll they'll be pasta jars for storing spaghetti and all that. So those to store. Yeah, it's, they're a little hot actually. So that just fits on that one. You don't have any sense left in your hands when you've been a potter for forty years. There you go. Two jars with lids and all that. But um, so I, I timed it just right. Anyway, so test, test, and test. You know, I mean, you, you really don't want to lose pieces, so so to do yourself some tests on some tiles or something before you risk something big like these. Um, alrighty, take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.